holy place. God who unites those who dwell in his house, he himself gives might and strength to his people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Very welcome to Mass today on the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. You are the Lord made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Glory to God, to heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, the Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favour, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in faith, hope, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Jeremiah, doom for the shepherds who allow the flock of my pasture to be destroyed and scattered. It is the Lord who speaks. This therefore is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the shepherds in charge of my people. You have let my flock be scattered and go wandering and have not taken care of them. Right, I will take care of you for your misdeeds. It is the Lord who speaks. But the remnants of my flock I myself will gather from all the countries where I've dispersed them and will bring them back to their pastures. They shall be fruitful and increase in numbers. I will raise up shepherds to look after them and pasture them. No fear, no terror for them anymore. Not one shall be lost. It is the Lord who speaks. See, the days are coming, it is the Lord who speaks, when I will raise a virtuous branch for David, who will reign as true king and be wise. 
practicing honesty and integrity in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel dwell in confidence. And this is the name he will be called, the Lord our integrity, the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ Jesus, you that used to be so far apart from us have been brought very close by the blood of Christ. For he is the peace between us and has made the two into one and broken down the barrier which used to keep them apart, actually destroying in his own person the hostility caused by the rules and decrees of the law. This was to create one single new man in himself out of the two of them and by restoring peace through the cross to unite them both in a single body. Later, he came to bring the good news of peace, peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near at hand. Through him, both of us have in the one spirit our way to come to the Father. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles rejoined Jesus and told them all they had done and taught. Then he said to them, You must come away to some lonely place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For there were so many coming and going that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going, and many could guess where, and from every town they all hurried to the place on foot and reached it before them. So as he stepped ashore he saw a large crowd, and he took pity on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he set himself to teach them at some length. The Gospel of the Lord. A man was caught in a very bad blizzard in Alaska, which is up towards the north of Canada. His truck, these huge big trucks that they drive up there had left the road and he ended up a long way from the main highway. It was getting dark, so he decided to await the morning light before taking any action. But when he woke up in the morning, 
His truck was completely frozen shut and covered in snow. It took six days before he was spotted and eventually rescued. But when he was rescued, the man who rescued him said, what were you thinking and doing in the last peak six days? He says, I was thinking an awful lot and praying an awful lot. Now, God forbid that we should be forced into circumstances like that before we begin to pray. Some people only pray in an emergency. They say there's no, um, there's no cowards, or what do they say, in foxholes. There's no atheists, that's it. There's no atheists in foxholes. They're all praying. But wouldn't it be a shame if we just left it to those moments in our lives? I think quiet time with our Lord in our lives should be part and parcel of every, everybody's life, howsoever busy. And maybe that's what Jesus had in mind today when he said to the apostles, who are so busy, toing and froing, feeding people, all the rest of it, even feeding themselves. He says, come away to some lonely place and rest for a while. And on umpteen occasions, Jesus himself beat a hasty retreat into the hills, away from the crowd, far from the madding crowd, as they say. He beat that hasty, he never forgot that, uh, to be alone, basically, with his father. And on one occasion, or maybe on several occasions, but it mentions once in the Gospel where he, he spent the whole night in prayer, to God his Father. Now you wouldn't think the Son of God would need to spend a long time in prayer, but there you are. He was giving us all an example. Now there are lots of retreats these days for lay people who want to deepen their faith. And I'm told many people come away from those re retreats spiritually refreshed and renewed. Now, over the next six weeks or so, many people will be going away to visit family and friends. Many will head abroad, of course, if regulations allow. But, sad to say, most people chase the sun and the sand in order to refresh their bodies. Whereas we just um, read in the psalm there, after the first reading, that um, we need to be refreshed. What does it say? It says, near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. We know we can get drooping bodies as well. Maybe that's what we're interested in more than in the drooping spirit, which the Lord is more interested in. We need to refresh that too. But restful waters to me seems to do more with inner stillness, doesn't it? Have we created that inner stillness among ourselves so that we can communicate with God and sort of shut out the world, as it were? Having said that, we do need to, su to find some quiet time to cultivate this inner stillness. You remember what the Lord says, when you want to pray to me, he says, go to your private room and when you have closed the door, don't leave the door open or else there might all sorts of distractions rush in. When you have closed the door, pray to your father, he said, who is in that secret place and your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. Now, some people may see this as a waste of time. They could be doing something more important. But we really need, and I'll use those same words, we need, really need to waste time with God. I remember when I became chaplain of Notre Dame years ago, well, way back in the early 80s, I was chaplain up there. And um, what the Sister Mary told me was, what you really need to do is waste time with the kids. Don't be always rushing here and doing something. Just be relaxed with them and talk to them as they are. And that's exactly what I did. Um, I didn't do that much work, but I just 
talked, walked with them, basically. I think that's what Pope Francis says. We must accompany one another rather than um, always be a leader. Um, as the saying says, don't walk in front of me, I may not follow. Don't walk behind me, I may not lead. Let's walk together and be, our fr be friends. And that's exactly what we have to do with God as well. So wasting time with God, now that's a good thing. Judging by the ratings, millions of people found time, didn't they, to watch the match last Sunday evening. And most people who are interested in sport anyway wouldn't have missed it for the world. I think our time with our Lord should also be a not-to-be-missed diary entry. Even if it's only ten minutes. Even if you just take out the book, that little book we give you, and read the gospel and see is the Lord saying something to you through that gospel. I often quote St. Teresa of Calcutta. Well, a priest came to her once and he asked her, what do you think I should do to become a better priest? She said, spend some quality time with our Lord each day in the Blessed Sacrament and your priesthood will blossom. So that's another way of wasting time with our Lord. You say, oh dear, the last thing you want to do is go into the church on a frosty morning and spend half an hour there even. But that's what really matters. Busyness is often seen by this generation as a looked, a looked up to quality, I'll call it. We look up to people, perhaps, if they're busy. But it may be little more than a smokescreen for our unwillingness to move beyond the material to the transcendent and the divine. So, to, to, to move beyond the material to the transcendent is basically what we should be doing with this time wasting with our Lord. Pope Benedict, if you remember him, he bemoaned the fact that our age has repressed the sense of God and of the transcendent. So those two things go out the window. The entire realm of religion, he said, faith in God, the domain of spirituality, is banished from everyday life and marginalized. Our spiritual side, he said, has been repressed. All kinds of repression, as you know, do us harm. Ask Sigmund Freud about that. All kinds of repression do us harm. But if you repress your spiritual side, many people do, that's going to do you harm as well. Unlike Jesus and the apostles, Perhaps we cannot go away. We're tied to the family. Perhaps we cannot go away to that lonely place and rest a while. But God is everywhere. And a quiet time spent with him will indeed reap its rewards. So if I was giving any of you any advice today on this particular gospel, I'd say waste more time with our Lord.
Have believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the door of the glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll all be seated, please. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we not share the mystery of Christ who humbled himself, share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. <laughs> Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who in this one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, Accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honour of your name may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all praise and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. 
Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, says the Lord. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Next Sunday is World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly, and it's the first time we've had that day. Pope Francis has designated it uh, towards that cause. And on our website, you have all the information. His little address is even on YouTube there, and also there's a prayer for parents, grandparents, and the elderly. And um, we'll try and get it on the news sheet as well for next week. Coronavirus, it may be not victory day yet, but we seem to be slowly but surely coming to the out of the pandemic. But it's not gone away. Restrictions will be eased gradually from tomorrow. However, please note that there is no rush to lift all restrictions in our churches at once after tomorrow. But rather we need to move forward at a pace that the people are comfortable with. Please be patient with us as we follow the bishop's guidelines which were emailed to us on Friday. The Sunday obligation for Mass resumes officially on the first Sunday of Advent, which will be the end of November. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For end, the news sheet in future will have two sheets of news, as it is today. We haven't printed off very many for today, but there'll be no longer the readings on it. But you will be given out a booklet, that little day by day book that you all know about that. That'll be given out to you free, and all the readings are in that. Go now in the peace of Christ. <laughs> Thank you.